Welcome to Electron Line. One of the most famous pulsars is the pulsar inside the Crab Nebula. The Crab Nebula is a result of a supernova that was seen in 1054 AD. It was from an event that was about 6,000 light years ago. So if you add 6,000 years plus about 1,000 years, that meant that this happened about 7,000 years ago and it took 6,000 years for the light of the supernova to reach Earth, which did, it did in 1054 AD. This is the remnant of that supernova explosion, known as the Crab Nebula, one of my favorite nebulas. It's absolutely beautiful, invisible light. But notice when we start taking pictures of the Crab Nebula in different light frequencies, or ENM frequencies, in radio it looks like this, in infrared it looks like this, in UV it looks like this, in X-rays it looks like this, and in gamma rays it looks like this. Now, you actually will see the pulse of the of the pulsar in gamma rays as well. And so what's interesting is that you see it in all those various wavelengths. Why would that be? Well, it turns out that there's a lot of energy that comes from the pulsar that's right in the middle of that nebula. All that energy causes what we call a pulsar wind. The pulsar wind is kind of like the solar wind where many particles are being shot out at very high velocities, in this case at velocities close to the speed of light. And those particles collide with the nebula particles around the pulsar. It causes the electrons to be knocked off and when they come back down they will emit energies at various frequencies and those various frequencies can then be uh, photographed in the various uh, E&M uh, bandwidths. Notice that the pulses occur about 30 pulses per second, which means that the period between pulses is about 33 milliseconds. So it's not a particularly fast pulsar, not a particularly slow pulsar. And since it's so close, it's only 6,000 light years away, and we can take pictures in all those various uh, E&M uh, bandwidths, and the fact that it happened only a thousand years ago so we can still see the remnant, supernova remnant, we can learn a lot from the event cause, uh, causing that particular uh, pulsar. So again, it's not just the radio radiation that we see along the... <laughs> All right. So it's just not the, the radio radiation that we see along the line of side of the magnetic fields, but it's also the, the uh, pulsar wind, kind of like the solar wind, that strikes all the various particles in the nebula that causes them to glow in all the various frequencies. Quite an event and quite a result. And it's beautiful to see in all the various uh, types of radiation of the electromagnetic spectrum. And that is what we see in the Crab Nebula. So the supernova that happened in 1054. We uh, happened about 7,000 years ago, but we saw the light reaching the Earth in 1054 AD. So what's it doing now? Oh, it's done. So the supernova is done, and the remnant of it is a, a neutron star, which is, of course, in this case, a pulsar, because we can see the pulses of the radiation. It's still pulsing? Still pulsing, but it's actually slowing down, and we'll show you on the next video what that really means. <laughs> Bro, do not do anything when you have not slept enough. It just, you won't do it. it